In this episode, we interview Wale, former co-chair of Seattle DSA. They talk to us about tenant organizing and how it strengthens our communities and impacts other organizing efforts. So you founded this ten- tenant organizing collective. So could you talk a little bit about that and yeah, how you how you founded it? That'd be cool. Um, so it's it's interesting because um, the roots of tenant organizing collective actually come from our workplace organizing collective, which was established like two years before the tenant organizing collective, and and that worked so well in that it would it um, yielded some unionizations um, and other uh, tenant uh, other workplace organizing successes, and um, that's and so it was like okay well um, might as well try this as well because landlords suck and um, I I'm I'm really pissed about my own uh, situation and like that's that's really that's really mobilizing and radicalizing for me and um, let's see let's see who can kind of bring aboard and at first it was pretty quiet like it, uh, we started it in September of, of, of 2019 and then it became something that was uh, a lot more involved uh, like early on in the quarantine when everybody was in this state of oh shit like I'm not working now how am I going to pay my rent uh, and so it was uh, and so like that was really great because it really helped us uh, get people in different buildings to organize because uh, people think about tenant organizing like when they when ideally they should have been organizing all along what are some of the ways that the i'm really interested in how the workplace organizing sort of transitioned to the tenant um collective and tenant organizing what did that look like oh it was really funny um i basically um at first uh it was me like flyering all across the building that i i lived in and was about to move out of I'm like, come check this out, and and nobody came. By the way, from from this, I think I flagged like 250 doors in this in this building. But um, I did also get people. I did get people to show up from different um, parts of the housing organizing community um, within Seattle. And so you know, small beginnings. Um, do not despise small beginnings. Like like in terms of how workplace organizing was involved it was basically like the model where it's like okay like just like have it be an, a time for people to come in and talk about like their 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 issues with their with their living situation versus their issues with their working situation and um and usually um it's like well that sounds like an opportunity to organize and that's how that works um, and also in terms of how it was it played um, in tandem with the workplace organizing was that back when we, in the before times when we were actually meeting in physical spaces, um, we uh, used the same space so that we, at, at the same time, so that we didn't have to pay for extra space. And that was, that was really beneficial um as a as a way to just be like hey like if you could you could do both you could organize your home your like your apartment building you can organize your work your workplace you have the choices are yours and uh we're here so so could you break it down like for people who might be familiar with okay i know what it's like you know what it's like for someone to organize workplace because i'm thinking of a union but like people are like okay what does it mean what does tenant organizing mean what are the kinds of issues that come up like wh- what are we going to be collectively um doing together like just to kind of for someone who just isn't familiar with this with tenant organizing what would you you know how would you describe the tenant organizing collective sometimes um you uh don't you have an issue like there's a leak that the, that the landlord has not fixed in months and it's an it's an issue like so uh, or there's there's mold and it's actually uh, messing with your breathing. It's messing with your habitability. Um, and in, in, in some places, if, if there is a sufficient 
um, threat to habitability in in your in your uh, place of residence, like you can withhold rent until that issue is fixed. Then there's also um, excuse me, so much soda water. <laughs> um, then there there is also um, like things things like okay. I don't think that we should have like this this hike in in our rent um like that's that seems pretty unfair and like all of these things make sense in ter um in terms of being um fixed through collective bargaining uh more so than through individual bargaining because of the power that people have that the people have is in numbers as opposed to the power that capital has is in its resources of, of money and land and yada yada. And so um, yeah, like the like any like if you have if you have like these grievances, if you're concerned about if you're concerned about uh, re uh, paying rent because for example, there's a, a, a pandemic where everyone's in quarantine and so like you're unemployed and like maybe 20% of your building is unemployed, then yeah, um, you're probably going to want to do some collective bargaining with the landlord to make sure that, that everybody gets a, a, a decent deal and people don't get left behind and you build solidarity that way. And, like, and the great thing is that you can always start with something small. So um, we had a situation where there were people who, um, there was a building where, where people were um, interested in having laundry um, service or some sort, of, some sort of coverage of the cost of laundry so that they could, um, they could actually sanitize their clothing more often because pandemic. And, um, they and so the the building management, property management, uh, was hemming and hawing at first, uh, and just like, oh, we can't do that. And and then they finally were like, um, okay, we'll we'll pay for for some laundry. We'll give you this amount of quarters that you can put into the machine um, um, every week, and and uh, but don't tell everyone. And of course, we tell everyone because, like, that's that's the whole point. Because, like, like if you win something, you you promote the heck out of it, and you build that solidarity. Uh, and and like and you know, like, ideally, it snowballs from there in 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 your favor. You know, that momentum of okay, like 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 a few people were on board at first. Now more people are on board, and uh, yeah, we can we can get this going. Um, then another thing is um, like. We there was a there was a building where 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 tenants um, were concerned about their ability to pay rent because like yeah people were were unemployed and um, yeah it was like a it was a big challenge and um, they collectively bargained with the landlord and the landlord agreed to discount the rent by three hundred dollars for that month so yeah. And so like that, that's the kind of power that is in tenant organizing and people don't think about that enough because people just assume that, that okay, rent, I, I guess I just have to fucking pay it because otherwise I'm out on the fucking street, right? Um, but that's, that's not necessarily true. That, um, like, I think that especially uh, the landlord is more open to negotiation um, if, if the landlord sees like that, that they could lose like so much income, not just one person in terms of income, but like a whole bunch of people. And so, yeah. And so there, there are a bunch of um, things that you can do to, to um, uh, push for, for change in terms of tenant organizing. You can, you can, um, you can do landlord shaming. One thing that landlords uh, benefit from is like this, this, um, this veil that separates private life and public life. And so like, if, if you're like popping up at this, at this landlord's church and saying, 
this guy is like no good. He's he's like he's not fixing the mold in in his building. Like you think he's an upstanding good Christian? Like look at what he's doing. You know, like that that goes a long way uh, in terms of in terms of actually getting getting them to to do things that um that they otherwise would not do. Um, and then there's also like, and then there's also appealing to elected officials, um, like ideal in some cases, yeah, the state can function as a cudgel or some sort form of enforcement to make sure that 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 landlords um, fulfill their um, their commitments, and and like that could be any, and then also like there are things just as like building codes, like like. So, a, so municipal building codes, like making sure that, that and that's why documentation, doc, when you have an issue, you document every single step of, of, of the interaction, like you get as much in writing uh, as possible because um, the, in terms of your interactions with, um, with the landlord or the property management uh, company, because you, you wanna have that paper trail. And so, um, yeah, like these are the things that go into into uh, into tenant organizing. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just want to jump in really quick and ask because you're talking about these, the tactics that we can use against um, landlords. What are some of the tactics that we have to help people prepare um, for landlords to try to use against them? Yeah, um, that's a that's a good question. I mean, I think that ultimately, like the the biggest thing that landlords will try to do is divide, right? Like, well, like they're like they're going to try to instill fear, and they're going to try to divide you. And so, um, ultimately, like you have to you have to inoculate people against these fears by setting expectations, right? And so, like you're like, okay, like the landlord is going to do this, this, and this. So like you, you should have that expectation. So this should not surprise you, but like we have protections under these regulations or like, like if, if all of us are together on this, like we have that much more protection. So like those, those are important steps that you can take to, to, to really uh, contravent those sorts of, uh, those sorts of moves by landlords. And um, like another thing is that like landlords are are um, are threatened if because like oftentimes landlords like they don't just do landlording they also have other businesses oftentimes like restaurants or that are in the same building or or something or other like they usually do and 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 so if you can also do more of that public shaming and and basically make it so that they're that this um, other revenue stream, whether it's a restaurant or or um, like a a veter a veterinary ho veterinary hospital, like what what have you, like like th that means that the landlord will have to be that much more dependent on the tenant's income, and so will be that much more dependent on on um, complying to the tenant's demands. So, yeah. And so like, like those are, those are like some, some great options. Um, like, like building, like doing whatever you can to build solidarity. So, to, so that, yeah, like you're less likely to be split up by landlords, uh, making sure that, that all negotiation is done as a group. Um, so, and, um, and then also like, if, if you know that some people are, are, like you do like some power mapping to see like, who's most likely to be, who from like your conversations is on your side, who is like, is somebody like within your building who's, who's kind of either or, and you need some more convincing and who's like just straight up against, like whether it's because like there's somebody who works for the property management company, who's just like a, and is like a live-in manager or because like they just, they just or don't believe in tenant organizing for some reason, like, and so like, yeah, like you, you power map, you figure out like, you figure out how to, how to tackle all of that and ideally isolate the, isolate the people who are, um, 
who are against you and your and your mission um in terms and so like you keep them out of the loop about about actions and stuff like that and then you go for it you know Cool. Well, so I really like, um, like everything you've said about this and I'm really happy, like, cause we had a, we, uh, have an interview with Bianca and she talked about workplace organizing and yeah. like just the amount of overlap is really good to know about. And also yeah. one thing that you mentioned, um, was like how I think you were inspired or you, you, you because there was another, uh, other people had been doing tenant organizing in the Bay Area, so you had there was some experience there to draw from, um, yeah. and so that that plus the workplace organizing kind of experiences channeled into this act this this project. I think I think it's just good for people to see that it it may start as like not knowing a lot and having a smaller you know kind of group, and like yeah. over time building something because I think people get really they get really defeated if you know they feel like they're going to have to start being super organizer um, like tomorrow when they haven't organized, like when they can't even like organize like a, a dinner or a meeting, um, they feel overwhelmed by the prospects of having to all of a sudden, Oh, do this big thing. Well, the thing is that like in a, in a smaller, in a smaller area, like if, like if, if you're not in a place where like they're like big high rises where you have to, where you feel like you have to organize like this huge skyscraper or something like that, then um, it can it can potentially be more manageable in terms of um, I mean that probably means that you'll you'll lean towards like organizing a neighborhood council as opposed to just the building, but you probably would still just start with the building first things first, um, and then move from there uh, because like yeah you want as you want to have a sense of like who who landlords are and and that's another thing like like doing a lot of uh research in terms of public records of like who land like what other properties the landlord owns because like that means that that's that many more people that you can bring to your side potentially and that you can um yeah that you can um bring together in, in a greater movement and yeah, like power numbers, just power numbers. I think that's something that seems a little different from workplace organizing is like who a landlord is because landlords can have all these different <laughs> different roles in the world. And it, I think it's really interesting and worthwhile to think of the different ways that you can kind of attack, uh, attack yeah. them in their public and private life. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're like in your community. That's not like a difference. Like they're in your community. Like my employer might be, you know, I don't know. I mean, I know, I know where he is at work, but like he, you know, might be somewhere else with his landlord. I mean, I guess landlord can also be like out of, you know, all over the place, but like in many cases there is a identifiable landlord and they live, you know, close or there's a place, you know, they know them in the community. So that is like a possible difference. Um, so another would, thing about that is that the DSA Afro, the the Los Angeles chapter of DSA Afro Socialist um, recently had uh, a, a seminar lecture whatever you want to call it, a talk about how the the there was this group called the CIM group which was an investment group it probably still exists I mean this was just a, a few weeks ago um, that was trying to buy Crenshaw Mall. And like do like do all this these other gentrification things, and like the money behind it was was actually from pension funds, like from like Cal including California pension funds, and so like the interesting thing is that sometimes it it's like it can be through something it can it can be really convoluted where you have like this the benefits of of workplace organizing. So like your uh, a pension funds um, being being deployed to advance like a, a capital a capital cause right and so um, and like that can be like invest real estate investment real estate investment is like such a huge part of capital and um, like I, I think it, it count, account real estate accounts for like sixty one percent of like investment finance globally so. Yeah. And which is, which is wild because like 
you call it you call it an investment interest instrument. I I call it a place where I can sleep safely. You know, right. like <laughs> right. it's it's really fucked up. Right. So you mentioned AfroSoch earlier. So for people who hopefully everyone knows, but in case people don't know what AfroSoch stand for, it's the AfroSoch uh, AfroSocialist and Socials of Color Caucus of DSA. Right. Um, and they have different, so it's a national formation, but it also has different like locals all over, all over the country. And, uh, Wale mentioned the, uh, LA afro Soch chapter. And I know that Wale is also founded, uh, an afro Soch chapter in, uh, in Seattle. Seattle. So could you, yeah, talk to me about like, talking about that, like, how'd you go about it? Like, what was, what was your vision for it? Like, what role did you want to, did you want it to play? That's really interesting that you're asking me because, like, you're y'all are in like the South. Like, you have a lot more black people, like per capita yeah. and everything, than, than up true. here in Seattle. Like, especially like Seattle, like proper. Um, that being said, Tequila has one of the most uh, diverse uh, school districts in the in the country. Um, Kent is all Kent and Federal Way are also really diverse school districts with like su substantial uh, black populations um and and uh afro -Soch is afro socialists and socialists of color so it's it's not just uh black folks um but we put afro at the front because we want a forefront um black leadership and also we want to uh combat anti-blackness from the get-go yeah, that's, um, I'm happy you said that because that's one of the big misconceptions about like the name, at least the intention behind the name. Um, so yeah, definitely thanks for like pointing that out for folks. So. Yeah, of course. And so um, in terms of in terms of process, like it definitely involved Bianca, by the way, um, like starting up AfroSoch because um, I I knew that we needed to do something to actually um, improve how we related um, as a chapter to communities of color and also to, to be more welcoming to, com to communities of color um, in terms of uh, cooperation and in terms of like people of color becoming DSA members. And so um, I went to this, um, this racial capitalism training that afro uh folks, like I think it was Bianca, Cara, um, and maybe like one other person um, who, tr who trained on, on racial capitalism and just like how like racism and capitalism are, are these are two branches of the same tree in some ways. And like, and so like how, like and we need to get rid of the whole thing, like racial capitalist patriarchy, we need to get rid of the, the, the system ultimately. And um, like that was that was really great, um, and I was like, okay, like, and I went all the way to Philly to to do the training, um, and that which was wild, um, and so I went to I went to Philly and met Bianca and other folks, and then I was like, yeah, like let's let's get you coming over to Seattle, and so we got um, like a a few Afrosocial people to come over to Seattle to to run that training as well. And we also um, we got some we got some great tips on how to just like grow the grow Afro social um, within Seattle by having like socials Afro socialist socials um, because you want to have opportunities for socials of color to, to come together congregate and uh, make and uh, make plans and make things happen so yeah and then on top of that and then um, yeah like. I like you, I had like a just like a monthly event that I that I would host like at this um, POC owned cafe, um, and that was that was really awesome, um, and and had all sorts of great conversations with with um, people of color about uh, people of color issues as they relate to socialism and and everything, and then the Bernie campaign happened and. Um, so there was a bit of a hiatus so because i was like just flying up in the air across the country like tr trying to get uh, trying to get black people to so support bernie in, in in nevada pretty successful uh trying to get black people to support bernie in south carolina not 
<laughs> so much. <laughs> so were you, Wale, were you were on, so I know the Afro social, like there were a bunch of calls about um, like come down and canvas. Like, did you go on uh, some, were you, were you on those? Or go on some of those? Um, I, I wasn't on any of the actual trips myself. Um, like, I, like I, I went on my own to, to those places, um, volunteering with the, with the Bernie campaign. But the thing is that like, I spoke with Bianca, I was like, yo, Bianca, we got to do this. Like, like we don't, we don't have, like, we, we need more black people coming and talking to the black people, just like POCs in general, talking to other POCs about, about Bernie. And so like Bianca, uh, was like, all right, I'm on it. <laughs> like, like say no more. And, and just like, and just like organize a trip over to, um, uh, to, to, uh, Vegas and which was, which is dope. And then like, and then, um, also organize, and I was like, yo, like, I, cause like during Afro like national meetings, I kept on saying, Hey, like, you know, like, uh, what if uh, we went to South Carolina, just like a, like a, a whole lot of black people going to South Carolina and, uh, and we're like, and people are like, Oh yeah. Yeah. And then I was like, I was like, yo, let, let's fucking do this. <laughs> like Bianca's like, say no more. And like, and like raised like ra with other Afro people raised $10,000 in a day in like 24 hours um to to like pay towards people to to be able to take trips down to, to south carolina and um i linked up bianca with with um with uh victoria from from the bernie campaign uh, a lovely black woman from the, from the bernie campaign in, in in south carolina and that was really that was really awesome to 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 connect them so that they could coordinate um on like just like getting them uh, getting all these black folks and other and other POCs to to come support the campaign, and like, and they got to be in a photo with Cornell West. I didn't, so good for them. <laughs> um, so I, I'd like you to convince Kevin to uh, found an Afro social chapter in the Triangle. So what have been some of like the really good <laughs> benefits of? Uh... <laughs> You're shaming me on this platform. <laughs> Of um of like Seattle DSA and Seattle AfroSoch, like how they work together. What has uh, AfroSoch brought to Seattle DSA? I think that that the AfroSoch is a great way to bring people into the fold, um, like people of color into the fold when it comes to DSA and and socialism in, in general. And it's a great encouragement for uh for people of color who are already leftists, who are already socialists, and want to, and like are, are kind of tired of like the, the pervasive whiteness of the space. And so like, it's, it's really interesting. Like I'd, I'd say that um, to give you some, some examples from, from Seattle right now, like, like our Afro Soch, like, especially like in the past like month has been really revived um, in light of the, the, um, the protests of, of police brutality, police violence. Um, and um, like, it's been really great in terms of helping, uh, like helping us connect with like some of the, some of the, of the grassroots movements of, of color that are, are part of this of this uprising, um, Charlene Lyles was was murdered by the Seattle police. Um, uh, like, it, she was murdered by the Seattle police a few years back, and it was it was terrible. She was she was she was pregnant. She was expecting help, and she was she was just shot down by the police um and like the we've been in touch with her with her family and um and we've been like really doing what we could to 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 forefront the demands that her family has um and and they have like four demands um and and um like 
one of them is like get the the these mayors around the county to stop to 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 withdraw their lawsuits against the county that that are that are that are preventing an inquest about um what happened um and and then like do the same with with the actual like the officers do and then who who were involved the, the murderous officers and then like um and then um like one, another demand was push for the the resignation to call for the resignation of the of the mayor of seattle jenny durkin um yeah is there anything you like especially wanted to talk about regarding like organizing in this moment organizing like right now from your perspective um do what you can to support the fundamental demands of the uprising right um of the of the people themselves because like because ultimately like we want to win the trust of the people uh especially uh people of color and like there's there we have to show and prove and like i think that sometimes like we can kind of out we can be a bit too either cynical or crafty or whatever for our own good when we um when we try to kind of maneuver some some ulterior motive you know so and and i mean to be fair right like you have to be you have to be like somewhat pragmatic like like we're not we're not fucking angels with wings and like doing it like for for pure altruism but like i think as a step to win trust like it makes sense to to really be in a place to listen um i and you can do it you can you can be strategic about it you can do it without being like totally reactive like you you do want to you you just want to be able to be present i want to like just thank you for spending this time with us and sharing all of your wonderful organizing knowledge wale yeah thank you so much thanks for you know giving up a katan win for us we really appreciate it yeah hey the real win is when we all win that's okay. right. <laughs> <laughs> so Wally the politician. Okay.